to my channel. I'm Jeremy Lee. Uh, I'm making this video for my grade 3 students right now, my grade 3 history students who are right now, wherever you are, I hope you guys are stay at home, okay? Because that is the best thing that you can do right now and for everyone. All right. Doesn't mean that you're staying at home. Doesn't mean that you're not uh, learning about, about the new lessons in history, in, in my subject, in my class. Okay, today we're going to talk about the second intermediate period and Hyksos invasion. Second intermediate period, Mr. Jeremy? Yes. Egypt, they experienced several intermediate period and this is the second one. And this is the amazing thing about Egypt. They always survive. They will always, uh, they, 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 they always get up and then after that they recover. Interesting, isn't it? All right. So uh, first, I'm going to give you guys the year uh, to give you guys a sense like the time frame or the timeline, like when it when it was happened. It was happened in uh, 1600 BC until 1555 BC, about that time. So that was about 15,000, 1500 before Christ. Or if you if you calculate it from current modern time right now. I mean, it happens about 3,000 years ago, yeah? So, uh, don't expect that we do not, don't expect that we have a kind of a complete historical record of what's going on because the story about the second intermediate period is blurred because it's just like way too old. Uh, one thing for sure, it seems to be bad for Egypt. It was described as a, as a, as a humiliating for Egypt, uh, ancient Egypt. Now, one of the things that we can spot is during that time, oh, well, by the way, second intermediate period, it happens after the Middle Kingdom period. Now, during the second intermediate period, like the tombs, okay, the pharaoh, I mean, the rulers, they built tombs not far from, not far from a Snefru's pyramid in Darshur. Now, why they built these tombs right next to kind of uh, the pyramid of Snefru? By the way, if you guys forgot, Snefru was the one who, the first pharaoh who built the pyramid, the true pyramid, okay, the true pyramid. So why these rulers, why these local rulers after, during the first, uh, during the, during this time after the, after, towards the end of the Middle Kingdom period, they built tombs right next to Snefru's uh, pyramid. It's because somehow they, number one, they, they, they could not afford as much as kind of like resources. They could not afford as much as workers to build tomb for them. But at the same time, they want to have also, <clears throat> excuse me, they want also to have an eternal life. They want also to have an afterlife, yeah? So apparently afterlife is no longer being exclusive, only belongs to the Pharaoh, but everyone wants to have an afterlife. And therefore, in order for them to get the power, they put it right next to the Snefru Pyramid, hoping that the power of the afterlife can be, you know, can be, can be influenced on them. I know it's a bit kind of weird, uh, yeah? So... That's what they. That's what they believe. But that means one thing. That means like the second intermediate period. Since there are so many, there are several rulers. That means like they do not have like you know one single powerful pharaoh. Exactly. That's what happened. We can assume Upper and Lower Egypt they got separated again. Yeah, between Upper and the Lower Egypt. The, uh, now, the Upper and the Lower Egypt. Uh, it was being described that. The Lower Egypt, now let's talk more about the Lower Egypt. The Lower Egypt, known as a Delta, okay, known as a Delta, the reason like why the name is Delta, because if you guys are familiar with the Greek alphabet, the letter D, the letter D is being kind of like, you know, it's symbolized with D, Delta. It looks like a triangle, right? So why do you name it Delta? Delta region, because uh, if you look at uh, the, the Nile River from above, from the map, okay, you will see this area over there on the lower Egypt, yeah, which is like this. This the Nile River start to branch out and then like uh, start start to branch out and then going goes to the Mediterranean Mediterranean Sea, and it looks like like a triangle. Yeah, it looks like a palm. Like look like yeah. If this is the river and then like all of a sudden like the river branch out and then it looks like a triangle somehow and then it will meet somewhere in the in the middle there like you know in the. They, all of this kind of like branch out of the river will meet up over there and yeah it looks like a delta yeah somehow yeah they, that's the that's the way need they name it now the delta region is a uh, it has a uh, more sediments it has more minerals compared to the upper Egypt and then it's kind of like muddy and considered to be moist and wet place uh, it's good for 
it good it is it is good perhaps for farming uh but it is not good for storing or keeping papyrus paper now many of this papyrus paper that in lower egypt is damaged is broken because it's just like the humidity is just so high and then it damaged the papyrus paper if you guys remember my lectures about the middle kingdom period period about the papyrus paper how brittle the papyrus paper is yeah it's quite fragile and then the way they store the papyrus paper is to scroll it yeah you, they have a, some kind of a scroll and they will roll it now uh and then you have to be very careful kind of uh, unrolling this kind of a uh, papyrus paper now over the years we're talking about thousands of years and you know, over the years what happened with this papyrus paper is damaged yeah damage because of the humidity at the same time because of the quality of the papyrus paper itself now then what else mr jeremy that we need to that you need to know about the lower egypt uh now the lower egypt it's at this moment at this moment according to the egyptian history they were being uh they were being invaded they were being kind of like occupied by uh foreigners people who are not egypt egypt they don't really like foreigners they think themselves better than the rest of the uh the neighbor well they will probably think like being invaded by but being invaded by the foreigners uh and it's something that is kind of like embarrassing for them it's something that really terrible who are these foreigners we do not know for sure who are these people but egyptian called them as the hyksos hyksos now this hyksos sounds like a never mind hicks <laughs> all of a sudden i got reminded with i got you know sounds like a sauce i mean hyksos so this hyksos people according to the description they came from asia they came from uh the canaan now they are completely different than the egyptian they dressed up differently they have a they have a they have a different customs and while most of the egyptians are farmers this hyksos most of them are shepherd uh probably it kind of like reminds you of a uh, of, a, of a Abraham, Isaac, and also Jacob's kind of like, you know, family, family, which is they are kind of like, you know, shepherding people. I mean, they are moving, they're nomadic, they are having a lot of cattle, and they're moving from one place to another place with their, with the cattle, yeah. And that will never happen in Egypt. Egypt, they would rather to settle down as a farmer in, by the Nile River, yeah. So, according to the description, like the Hyksos kind of like invading, like, you know, lower Egypt, but then I can not in details how it happens. Uh, and then somehow Egypt, the Egyptian described them as a evil, as a bad guy. Yeah, uh, this kind of like you know Hyksos is being described that they have, they have a king, they have a king, they have a they have a king by the name of uh, Apophis. Interesting. When we talk about Apophis, Apophis is uh, according to the Egyptian uh, mythology, Apophis is the kind of like this giant snake. That live under the underworld. Okay, if you guys remember, uh, maybe I never mentioned this one in the classroom. Like this is like the way Egyptian believe that the world looks like. Yeah, everybody, everybody lives on top of the surface. Yeah, and then yeah, and then after that, the sun will rise from the east to the west. Okay, and after that, on the next day, the sun will rise again on the from the east to the west. Now, after the sunset. The sun, which is being 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 personified as a as a the sun god by the name of Ra, have to go through the have to go through the underworld, have to go through the underworld. Okay. Now, while the sun have to travel through the underworld, now the sun always in dan dangers of being eaten by this kind of a giant serpent by the name of Apophis. Every night, every night. So that's why. There was this kind of like anxiousness <clears throat> among the ancient Egypt that will the sun will rise again in the morning, yeah. If the sun is rising in the morning, that means Ra or the sun, uh, somehow won again or not won, maybe escape the Apophis. But who knows? Maybe someday the Ra or the sun will be swallowed by the snake. Yeah, that's the name of the king Apophis, a uh, Hyksos king. So it seems to be kind of he, uh, and then after that the Hyksos. Also, they built a city in the lower Egypt by the name of Apophis. S sorry, my bad. By the name of Avaris. Okay, by the name of Avaris. 
Now, uh, next, who are these who are these Hicksos people? We do not know, but most likely these Hicksos people has something to do with the Israelites. Not sure, but the way their lifestyle is similar like the Israelites. Yeah, as I said earlier before, as a shepherd, most of them. Now, continue. Uh, meanwhile, the Upper Egypt. They are still retain their Egyptianness. They still retain their uh, their kind of like culture as an Egyptian. Now one day, one day, one of the rulers by the name of Second Henry Tao the Second, yes, Second Henry Tao the Second. I'll put the writing somewhere there. Yeah, he valiantly, he bravely challenged the uh, the occupations of the Hyksos in Lower Egypt. And he decided to have a war with the with the Hyksos. So he kind of like you know he gathered with him his army, his troops, and then he marched from the Upper Egypt all the way to the Lower Egypt. Upper Egypt's capital is Thebes, and then they marched all the way to Avaris in the Lower Egypt. Now somehow interesting, there's something terrible happened with Second Henry Tao the Second. Even though he was valiantly, he was the one. He was the first ruler who uh, kind of like challenged the Hyksos. Now, second Henry Tao, he was like what? He was, he died in the battlefield. He was struck to death by the enemy, by the Hyksos perhaps. But uh, he was famous for his mummy, for his mummy. Why? The mummy of Second Henry Tao the Second was known as the one of the one of the example of a, of a, a kind of like bad process of mummification. Um, when they found like his mummy, the mummy was in a bad condition. Okay, it was not well preserved. It has a kind of like you know somehow probably I can imagine it smells weird. Okay. Uh, anyway, we learned that somehow from his mummy, from Second Henry Tao the Second's mummy. He had a kind of like a, a very brutal, a very violent death. Okay, he 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 have a broken arm. It seems to be he tried to block the enemy, and after that, and then he have a he have a wound on his skull and behind his back. So it seems to be he was hit by the, in the back, and after that he got like what, you know, the 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 probably he was like you know one against like several men, you know, took on took uh took upon him. So yeah, he was kind of like you know it was a violent death. Now. What what happened with this mummy? The mummy was kind of like you know we have to gone through like what we call the emergency mummification. Emergency mummification. What does it mean? It was not not an ideal time. It was not an ideal uh, method to mummify. It, but yeah, it was an emergency mummification because they don't want secondary the Tao the second ha uh, not going to the uh, afterlife. So the when they mummified the body, it was kind of like too late. It was in the battlefield. Two days, three days later, uh, they recovered the body, and after that, they mummified, mummified second Henry Tao. It was not perfect. They do not have enough kind of herbs. They do not have enough natron. They do not have enough. Uh, it took for about like 40, 50, 40 days, fifty days, in order for you to mummify the the whole process. Like mummification is finished, but then again, it probably lesser than that. Yeah, it was bad. Anyway, uh, next part. Now with this, with the death of Second Henry the Tao the Second, uh, we got, you know, his death was not in vain. His fight against the Hyksos was being carried on by his two sons, Amose and Kamose. Amose and Kamose. Now the first one, the first son is Kamose. He finally defeat the Hyksos. He finally get rid of the Hyksos away from Egypt. And Somehow, he was being later. Uh, he he after, but somehow he died. He died after he defeated the Hyksos. He died, and then he was replaced by his younger brother by the name of Ahmose. And Ahmose ends the sec. He ends the second intermediate period, and now Egypt entering like this. What we call the new intermediate period. Now intermediate period, there will be so much fun in the in the new. I mean in the new. Did I say new intermediate period? What I meant is like, you know, the new period of Egypt. The new kingdom period. New kingdom period. What? Yes, uh, the new kingdom period. Now, let's go back to a um, little bit. I mentioned it earlier in this lecture that uh, we do not know much about 
in details about like what who are these Hicksos people? Are these Hicksos people are real? Are they really really uh, have something to do with Joseph? Now, interesting. Do you guys know Egypt? They have a bad habit of uh, they have a bad habit in writing their history. They have a bad habit of writing their history. They will not going to tell in detail. I mean, they will not going to tell the full story. Egyptian, they were notoriously known for only writing the good things about them. They only write the the series of a victory, but then again, they will never write their defeat. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of like probably it's kind of like it's a little bit hilarious like if you read like for example if you track down like the history of a, of a, of a series of a battle of a, one of the pharaoh for example let's just say the pharaoh had a war with someone okay with another country and then the war the the way the, the, the war i mean the battle was being always won the pharaoh always won but weird thing is like the the, the victory always getting closer and closer and closer to his homeland or to his home what does it mean? Yeah, his, it's a series of defeat, but actually the pharaoh, uh, the Egyptian historian will, the Egyptian kind of like, you know, writers, author, scribes, they will write it that it, that they never lose. Yeah, so it's kind of a bit weird. Um, now, there are this kind of like, you know, theory that the Hyksos are Joseph, okay? Hyksos are the Israelites who moved to Egypt. And then somehow they become prosper and they become powerful and they they, they kind of like they control most of the uh, lower Egypt and then yeah so could be it it could be it could be could be Joseph could be Jacob yeah and uh, also there's this kind of a theory that it could be the Hyksos could be them because there is this vocabulary in ancient Egyptian language known uh, there's this group of people known as the Hipiru Hipiru which is sounds like what. Hebrew, Hebrew, yeah. Uh, it's still a theory, so we're not sure yet what is it. So, of course, there are more. There are more kind of like you know Egyptologists out there who are studying about this one. There are more. Uh, there are scholars out there who who uh, get involved. Uh, you know, still doing research about it. We'll just kind of like you know stay tuned for probably like what another couple of years until they found the answers. So uh, I think that's it. That's my lectures uh, for this for this kind of like for the series for the second intermediate period and the Hyksos invasion. Okay. All right. So I see you guys next time. Bye bye. God bless you.